Uh, hi, in this video I will describe the cardiac action potential. But before I do that, I think it's important to emphasize that we can see a heart here on the left hand side and we can see that there are different ac action potentials coming up from different parts of the heart. It's because different parts of the heart perform different functions, so you would expect therefore that the sinoatrial node, which is consistent mainly of pacemaker cells, has a very different action potential to the ventricular muscle which consists of cardiac myocytes. So in this video I will talk only about the action potential that we record from cardiac myocytes, in other words the cells that make up the ventricular muscle. So this is your classic cardiac action potential from ventricular muscle with different phases clearly shown and it's plotted as millivolts over time. I think it's important to know that the length of this action potential it is very very long particularly when compared to for example neuronal action potential but the reason for that is so that the heart contraction needs to be regulated so that the heart doesn't go into reentrant arrhythmias. So this length of it really protects it against the reentrant arrhythmias. It's also important to emphasize that there are three major ions that regulate the cardiac action potential. That is primarily potassium with very high concentration intracellularly, then sodium and then calcium. So here we have a cardiac myocyte <clears throat> with um, T-tubules being shown here, with the sarcoplasmic reticulum which are the uh, endogenous calcium stores and all the major ions uh, ion transporters that, that regulate the cardiac action potential and the cardiac contraction. So the first thing that happens is of course we are in phase 4 where the, uh, where the voltage is kept very negative at minus 90 millivolts by the actions of sodium pump extruding sodium in exchange for potassium and the potassium channel IK1 so a lot of positive charges are being extruded which means that the membrane potential is very negative. Then when the cells around this myocyte get excited some sodium and some calcium enter the cell which shifts the action potential from minus 90 to about minus 70 millivolts. What this means is that sodium channels which are present throughout the cardiac myocyte and there's lots of them immediately get activated so sodium floods into the cardiac myocyte therefore making it very positively charged so your membrane potential or action potential shoots up from minus 70 to around plus 20 plus 30 millivolts so this is your zero phase of your action potential at positive charges of course they get switched off and uh, at, at a very positive charge here you can see this little dip that is mainly a result of I21 which is a potassium channel which, which switches, off, switches on and switches off very quickly and therefore takes the action potential just slightly lower towards the more negative charges because some potassium has left the cell. Then we enter the phase 2 which you can see has a fairly flat slope for a prolonged period and that is because <clears throat> that's a consequence of potassium leaving the cell from I22 and some of the other channels as well as calcium coming into the cell through the L-type calcium channels but also calcium being released from the SR as a consequence and therefore as well as calcium leaving the cell through the sodium calcium exchanger. But sodium coming in and therefore bringing positive charges. So L-type calcium channels being open and sodium calcium exchanger being active are bringing positive charges into the cell which want to therefore which means that your action potential wants to go up but some of the potassium channels are actually open at the same time in particular IKR, IKS and IKP which are actually keeping wanting the membrane potential to go down so the the net result is a fairly flat slope as a consequence of the two offsetting each other. Then in phase 3 
the IK1 channel again switches on uh, and you've still got all the IKR, IKS and IKP channels switched on as well as well as the I22 which are all potassium channels making potassium leave the cell so making all these positive charges leave the cell and therefore resulting in a very very steep decline in membrane potential towards the minus 70 millivolts to, towards the minus 90 millivolts again at minus 70 millivolts you've still got the activity of the sodium pump and also the activity of the IK1 the other potassium channels switch off at minus 90 millivolts in order to keep the cell at its resting membrane potential until it's ready for its next beat.